There is a lot of hype and controversy behind emailing a professor, whether you're trying to do it for an internship as a high school student, research position as an undergrad student, or trying to do it for admissions as a master's or PhD student. So in this video, I'm going to share some facts on when you should be emailing a professor, is it even a good idea, and give you guys a template on what that email should look like. And let's face it, this is going to be from personal experiences and not from like chat GPT, because professors hate that. A little bit about me, my name is Saloni, I did my undergrad research at Harvard, I graduated from Cornell with my master's, and when I was actually applying for my master's, I even got into a fully funded PhD program. So a lot of the facts and things I'm going to share today is from personal experience as well. So first, let's understand why you should be emailing a professor. If you are in high school or in undergrad, you're most likely doing it for an internship or a research position. And it's a good idea if you're genuinely trying to find someone whose interest and background matches with what you want to do in your career. But on the other hand, if you're just bulk emailing professors and trying to get any and every opportunity, that might not be the right fit for you. On the other hand, if you're trying to apply for a graduate program like a master's or PhD, I know that many programs here in the US do not require that students secure a supervisor or professor before applying and you just technically can just straight up apply. But there's a slight advantage to connecting with a professor beforehand. The thing is, one, there are less number of students that are applying for a graduate level program, which means that when your application actually gets submitted and you're indicating on your application that, for example, let's say I'm applying to a biomedical engineering PhD with a focus and interest in microfluidics, there might be a microfluidics professor that's looking at my application. If I was in contact with this professor maybe last year, the professor is able to put a face on the application and it gives you a slightly better edge over the other applicants and also helps you put a better first impression. Let's talk about shortlisting your professors. Now there are two things you need to avoid at any cost. One, using a fixed email template to send to each and every professor and two, emailing five to 10 professors in one university. The key thing is you should actually only be targeting one to three professors from each college because it shows that you're specifically interested in a particular topic that their research is focused on. And two, professors talk to one another. If they find out that you've emailed all of them, you're most likely going to be rejected and you know ignored by that entire university altogether. Your goal should be to shortlist one to three professors from each department of a particular university. And the way you go about doing this is you go onto the university website and navigate to the department that you're actually interested in. For example, it can be computer science. Now, once you're in that department, you'll be able to find a list of professors that are basically focusing their research in various fields. Within this list, you can see their different research areas. With what you are actually interested in, you then open their lab website and you can find in depth what their research lab focuses on, what other researchers are doing, what kind of publications they've um, yielded, and most importantly, some labs will even have like a join us tab or section where they talk about prospective undergrad or graduate researchers. If you want to apply to their lab, what type of a profile they're actually looking for. So you can tailor your profile according to their needs to stand out when you're actually reaching out to them. How early should you actually start reaching out? Now, if you are doing this as a high school or undergrad student, I would say about a year to six months is good enough because again, it takes time. On the other hand, if you're doing it for your graduate applications like a master's program or PhD, you can start this process even further back in advance. So one to two years even. The, the whole point is you need to give yourself enough time to make mistakes, correct your email template, um, go through the interview process if there is one and build solid relationships with the people that you're trying to interact with. Now, I know most of you are planning to come to the US for either an undergrad or graduate level degree. And one thing that you cannot leave behind is your Dossier perfume. Dossier offers a variety of fragrances that you can choose from both for boys as well as girls. They come in super travel friendly sizes that you can carry around anywhere 
college campus, dorm, different classes, have it in your backpack, on the go. There are tons of options to choose from and you guys can use the link in the description below to grab yourself a Dossier perfume. So let's start with the email itself. Before I go into the template, I want to address your email ID. I know a lot of you must have made your email ID when you were like a teenager or even still are, but way back then. And we want to avoid things like Saloni is very cool at the rate gmail.com. It doesn't look quite professional. Just if you need to make a new email ID with like underscore and a few numbers, that's okay. First name, last name, that's fine too. But it needs to look somewhat decent because you're trying to, you know, approach a professor who is highly ranked. So next we come to the subject of your email. A few things that you do not want to do include leaving it blank. If you leave your subject blank, the email goes as no subject, which looks very unprofessional. Second thing, don't put your name in the subject of your email. Your name is already visible right before the subject when it's sent to someone, so it doesn't need to be repeated. Lastly, the subject can be something like prospective student looking for a research position, prospective undergrad student, prospective high school student, um, research opportunities for undergrad students, something along these lines is acceptable to have. We come to the main body of your email. You're going to start with a professional greeting like professor followed by first name or doctor if that person has a PhD followed by first name. You want to avoid things like hey or hey dude. Remember, this is not your buddy who you're talking to. He is or she is um, an esteemed professor in a university. So you need to show that respect. Now, when you come to your email itself, there needs to be three very distinct sections of your email. The first one talks about your qualifications and your background relevant to the position. The second is, what are you trying to ask in this email? Are you asking to be considered for a master's or PhD program? Are you asking for an internship? Are you asking for a co-op? Are you asking for a research position? What do you need? And lastly, a polite conclusion that wraps up the email. With this, you have your ending where you sign off your name. Don't leave it blank. It can be something like sincerely followed by your full name or regards, full name, and then your one line qualification, like maybe you're in your year three of undergrad or ninth grade high school student, something like that. This entire email is a rough structure, but the important thing to note is don't copy it from anywhere. Just type the actual email out. Especially do not copy from ChatGPT. It's very, very evident if an email is taken from an AI generated tool and professors don't even bother replying to this. So within your email itself, it's important when you're showing your qualifications, you also show how you would be a good fit for the lab itself. And the best way to do this is on the lab's website, you can read their most recent publications. You don't need to read their entire research papers, but maybe just the abstract of some of the research papers that they've published so that you can get a good understanding of the type of work that they do. And what you need to do is match your qualifications or background into showing how you could help the lab or how you could be an asset to the lab. Now, an example of this would be, let's say me from a biomedical engineering background is trying to apply for a PhD in mechanical engineering. What I would do in the email that I'm sending is highlight any mechanical engineering related projects that I've done that showcase my skill set and experience in the lab. This could look something like highlighting some of my papers in conferences that I've submitted, as well as showing the skills that I developed during that work and how it can be used, matching it to the most recent publications that I read about in that lab's website. Now, once you're done with this entire email, remember that it's okay for you to maybe bold or underline a few parts that you think may really highlight and grab the attention of the reader. Don't highlight full sentences and paragraphs and keep your email short and to the point. Remember, you need to ask for what you're actually writing about. A lot of times students just blankly write all of this and then be like, well, I want to do anything that's available. Be a little specific. It shows that you have a clear goal and motive in mind. When you're writing your conclusion, you also need to have a kind of summarizing tone and be appreciative and thankful for the fact that they've actually read your email. An example of what the summary can look like includes, I'm available for a quick call to discuss how I could be helpful for your lab. I appreciate you taking the time to read this email. Or 
I would love to set up a meeting to go over my qualifications. In the meantime, please see my resume attached. Thank you for considering this request. Now with this template, I hope that you know you found a rough idea on how you can structure your email. Remember, it needs to be custom to you and not just taken from some random place on the internet because you really need to impress the professor that you're trying to reach out for. Now, some of the strategies that personally worked for me included not to write any emails on holidays or weekends or even Friday. The reason being obvious. Professors may not check your emails for a few days and by the time it's Monday and a working day, your email would have gone to the bottom of their inbox and they will forget to reply. A good time to send an email is Monday morning or Tuesday morning, their local time. And you can easily do this using the scheduling feature in Gmail or whatever other you know, email option that you're using. Learn how to do it and utilize these strategic techniques. Next, you need to keep yourself organized because the truth is you may need to email close to 100 even more professors and not all of them will reply. And the ones that do, you need to remember what their research was about, why did you write to them and all this stuff. So I have a Notion template that I created for you guys that you can use anyone, whether you're trying to apply for an internship, research opportunity, or a grad admission related thing. But if you're trying to email a professor, I think this is the perfect way to do it. You have a list where you, you list down all of the professors, when you reached out to them, what their status is. And on the other hand, you have email templates as well. The thing to note here is that your first email may not be your best email. And a good judge to this is, let's say you create an email template and reach out to 10 professors. One week later, not even a single one has responded. There's definitely some changes or improvements you need to do in your email. That is when you create your second draft of your email template with the minor changes and reach out to the next set of professors. Let's say one of them responds. You're definitely doing something right. And then you keep building and improving upon, you know, your email itself to make yourself better. Remember, this isn't like a one stop process. You keep improving. That is how you succeed. And that is how you improve your chances of actually reaching out and building these valuable connections. Now, in my opinion, this email template technique will work if you're trying to secure an internship in your own city or even virtual internship opportunities in you know, the US sitting from India. Just make sure you're very clear that you're looking for an unpaid virtual internship. And I've seen professors be kind to a lot of students. On the other hand, if you are trying to apply for a graduate level degree, like master's or PhD, I know that you may not find too much luck within the US because their admission process doesn't require you to secure a professor beforehand, but I've seen many options where you can list that, have you been in touch with a few professors and you can list one, two, three priorities. So this is where that comes in handy. On the other hand, Canada is extremely useful for this technique as well. I've seen so many cases where you can secure and build these connections beforehand with a professor and it almost guarantees you that acceptance because their process depends largely on getting a supervisor and having that professor before you even apply for that particular university. So that's all that I had for this video. I hope you guys found it useful. Definitely check out that Notion template that I built specifically for you guys. And like this video if you're watching till this point, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.